So this is the third time I've recorded this beginning part and the, the reason behind making this video is I just came up with a different idea. I'm not just a painter, I am this person with this crazy, crazy creative mind and I'm always, I feel like an inventor sometimes. I'm making things up and I get so excited when I come up with something new. So hopefully these two meld together well and you can listen to the stories as well as watch me draw rather than just having music. So what you're seeing here is I'm drawing on a travertine tumble tile and it's a natural stone. It's very absorbent. I love how the ink absorbs into it. It's a little tricky sometimes working with the pen nibs. I, I used to use a felt pen but I would much rather use the ink because it's more permanent and it's just the quality wise. It, it's, it's a nicer it gives you a nicer line, a more natural line, not one that's quite the same. As you can see, it's a little bit scratchy. This pen that I'm using here is super fine, and it's a, just a very, very fine pen. And now I'm using a brush, and I'm brushing on acrylic ink as well. Uh, the tiles have a lot of texture in them, so they're not so easy to draw on, and sometimes the ink uh, goes in a direction that you don't really want it to, so then you have to kind of you sort of have to work with that and as well the little pits in the stone will catch the pen and flick little black dots all over so again you have to incorporate that into the piece as well I'm getting better at avoiding that the more I do them but you can find these when they're all finished off with wood you can find them on my Etsy store and it's just a nice break from my serious work on canvas so hopefully you find this enjoyable So for me, nothing really sparks that feeling of spring is coming than the sound of a robin in the neighborhood. And there's been a few of them lately. I sit outside on the back deck and have my coffee in the morning and I can hear them calling back and forth to each other. So I'm really starting to feel that in my, you, know, you just get it in the gut. That's like, oh my God, oh my God, spring is coming. Winter's nearing the end. And the robins definitely help bring that out in me. And same with the daffodils coming up and and everything so it, it's happening everybody it's happening um, I once saw a robin hopping around in the dead of winter when I was out walking and I'd seen him a few times around the yard and and then I saw him on the trail close to our place and and I was kind of sad that that he was still here and he missed his call south now really I, I'm gonna have to look this up and find out if robins sometimes stay around I know some birds do now that never used to but this guy just sort of was all by himself and hopping around and was maybe a little too friendly for a robin. So I thought maybe he wasn't quite equipped to travel, even if he wanted to. I only saw him a few times and then didn't see him again. So I'm really not sure what happened to him. Um, as a child growing up on Vancouver Island, and I'm pretty sure all over the place robins are just a part of spring, but but I know here they just were. And, and I just kind of took them for granted as just something that was there in my world. But they really are woven into my natural instinctual knowing uh, that spring is here or summer. You, you can hear them calling and you know you can kind of have tell what time of year it is. Uh, the other ones I like is the in the summer, the late night singers, I call them the midnight robins, and they seem to always have the last word over the neighborhood when the day's done and before the owls start. And late to bed, early to rise, it seems to keep robins healthy and wise. Not sure about the wealthy part, but it uh, just makes me uh, take a deep breath and think, oh my God, I live in an amazing place. Another one of my favorite robin things is how they appear in huge numbers in the backyard. Then they create almost like this search grid all over all these gray females and red-breasted males hopping around, hopping along the lawn in, in these huge groups, cocking their heads and hauling out these big juicy worms or pecking bugs out from underneath the grass. And uh, last year, 
they didn't appear. There was only a few that appeared and I don't know why, I don't know what happened, but it was, it was kind of, it was a real disappointment because I was waiting for them. So each year I dub the pair that happens to be hanging out in the garden is Mr. and Mrs. And this last pair of this year, um, last year was very possess possessive of the garden plot and would really aggressively chase off any other robins who dared to land close by. It was quite interesting. They were onto a good thing, I guess, and wanted it all for themselves. Not so different than me if uh, someone came into my yard and took from my garden. I'd probably be pretty aggressive as well. Um, so when the time comes, they always bring their demanding fledglings in and leave them where they feel safe. This is like this ultimate compliment that they trust me enough to leave their babies in the garden with me and uh, leave. It's I would definitely make sure that no predators would be able to get in. I don't have cats, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, the youngsters would appear in and out of the grown-up rows of uh, kale and chard and, and they would hide from me and peek peek out from the, the big leaves. They were so cute. Um, very curious, but, but again, they had that wary, instinctual eye on me, but they would get a little closer than their parents would. Uh, one year I noticed this little fella who was not quite right. Um, he, and he had no fear of me and his mother only seemed to be feeding the loud demanding sibling and just kind of leaving him alone to poke about. And this little fella seemed totally content picking around in the dirt in his safe and plentiful world. And he wasn't that far away from me, like only a foot or so. Um, I enjoyed his company, but knew he wouldn't be around for long. And I was right, as a couple of days later, I found him laying cold and still under a large cabbage leaf. Mother Nature can be cruel at times, but I felt this little fella had a short and happy life. So this year, Mr. and Mrs. had built a nest just on the edge of the forest on the other side of the driveway. And I watched Mrs. go back and forth and back and forth. And she was digging up mud and sticks and dried grass from underneath where the tap was. There was a little bit of a leak there and it filled this, this area with all this great mud for for nest building. So she she was really busy and it, I was kind of watching and Mr. didn't live to toe or bird claw stick leg, whatever you want to call it. But I guess his job was guarding and he was on guard duty with his chest puffed out and his none shall pass mindset and he was rather proud of it. So, you know, I guess that's the way it goes. A few days later, I heard the robin's distress call in the forest, and that's always a sign that there's an owl or ravens or something in there that, that's unfortunately going through the nest and, and looking for their eggs and, and their baby robins. So this time it was ravens, and there they were. They're clucking away to themselves, and... Um, going from branch to branch, sort of fluttering about. And I, I really wish I had this super, super long range super soaker. But but then again, living out here, you have to accept the way things are. And, and nature is not always, it's not Disney out here, uh, everybody. <laughs> not Disney at all, but it, it's nature and, and you got to accept it. it it's it's not, not really an easy thing to do. But then the really neat thing was two weeks later, a friend of ours was out on the deck and he looked down and he saw a robin's nest right in our grapevines, right off the front of our deck. And it had three beautiful blue eggs in it. It was really well hidden. And I didn't even see her building the nest. So she was building it right under our noses and nobody even saw her do it. And I was thinking she must have been working the graveyard shift or something. She was pretty sneaky about it. So in my creative mind, I'm thinking, hmm, this missus is a pretty smart girl doing this risk assessment. I can see her thinking, hmm, nest high in the trees away from humans, not so safe. Nest set in the grapevines where the humans leave, yeah, pretty safe. And she was right in her assessment. So. We stopped using the laundry line for weeks. I put up signs on the deck and avoided all the direct area in front of where her nest was. Um, the exercise was good for us to go around. 
and we actually even were able to take photos of them from looking down as soon as Mrs. went into the garden. I would sneak my cell phone over the edge and they never saw my face. And I was really surprised that it didn't take very long before they flew the coop and everything went back to normal on our back deck. I kind of missed the cute little fellas, but they did appear in the garden. All right, so I'm going to save my favorite Robin story for the last. And this was where I used to live. It didn't happen here, and it was quite a few years ago, but one of those things that you just never forget. I was sitting out on my back deck, and I think it was about the fall, and there was this beautiful mountain ash tree right beside the deck where, where I always sat. And it was really popular with cedar wax swings at certain times of the year, and at other times the robins used to frequent it. And the robins were pretty funny. They would just fill their faces with the, the bright red berries. And there was always seemed to be this energetic party going on with birds arriving and departing and clucking and calling away to each other. On this particular day, though, there was no one there except one robin. And he let out this series of notes to probably was calling for somebody or, or I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure what robins do, but he let out this series of notes. So I'm sitting up there all by myself and I decided to mimic him. So I copied it back in the best Robin voice that I could come up with. And he cocked his head and he looked down at me and seemed to be thinking for a few seconds and repeated the same notes again, but he added a new one at the end. So I copied the same thing and again with my best Robin voice and adding that extra note at the end that he had put. And so he cocked his head once again and repeated the same series of notes with that extra note and added another one and uh, another one at the end. And this Robin was playing Simon with me. You know that, that game with the colors and the doot 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 you, and you have to copy it every time? He was playing Simon, I swear. Uh, so I took up the challenge and I copied him exactly. And this exchange went on for a while, probably five minutes, which is a long time when you're sitting out in your yard talking to a bird. And each time he cocked his head and then added a new note to the end. It was getting longer and more complicated. And I think he was just as amazed as I was <laughs> this going on. And eventually he let out a few of those short robin chirps that they do and he, and he flew off. My guess is that my notes were wrong and he won. So anyways, it was an amazing experience that I sometimes wonder if I actually made it up. I've tried this since with other robins, but of course, you know, it, nobody has taken me up on the challenge. Uh, perhaps he just needed a friend to talk to at that time, or I'm thinking more like it, he had a good buzz on from eating the fermented mountain ash berries all by himself, and I was the interesting stranger that he sat there and talked to. So that's my story. That's my favorite Robin story. And